Good, so I would like to invite you all to come to the Delhi Ashram and visit all our activities in uh, Madhuban, which is a very beautiful place, extremely beautiful, Nainital, which is a uh, tourist resort, or oh, it's a tourist place, but ours is away from the tourist area. We are all by ourselves on the top of the hill, also very beautiful. And then we also have uh, a place uh, in Odisha where we are uh, running a school for an for extremely, extremely poor village. And the entire village children are now coming to our school and it's a residential school and they get everything. Free board, lodging, tuition, books, everything they get free. And they speak now. This it's very difficult to. I mean, it's very far to reach. But still, the children all speak English now. They speak Hindi. They speak Uriya. They speak uh, their own mother tongue, tribal tongue. So all these places are very interesting, not only for sightseeing and passing some time, but everywhere where you could do some social work, you could. Uh, volunteer, you could participate. So let me invite you all to come, correspond with us. The school that you run, how old are the students, how many, and how school. Uh, the school was started by the mother in 1956. She's asking the schools that you run now. 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 The Delhi school. The Delhi Ashram school. See, we are, uh, we are running several schools. Oh. And we are trying to start two colleges now. Wow. And the first school that was started was in 1956, uh, when this part of Delhi was outside Delhi. The ashram where it is now is uh, one of the most coveted areas uh, of Delhi. But at that time it was a village called, it was in, near Meroli and uh, there was nothing there, there were only villages. And mother told my father to start the school. So he started with three students and mother gave the date 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's the date on which it should start. 23rd April 1956. Two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> so the school started with three students, and uh, my father used to go by car and pick up the students because otherwise he wouldn't get students. <laughs> and from the ashram in Pondicherry, mother sent uh, 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 Pearson. Uh, I, I don't know. Richard. Richard, Richard. Richard's father. father. Richard's father came and uh, started the school. He was the first principal of the school and during that time they managed, there was no drinking water. My father used to bring drinking water, he used to go to his office and he used to bring drinking water from seven kilometers away and things like that. They passed through a lot of difficulty and he told mother, mother there's no electricity, no water. She said, you shift there then everything will come. If you are not experiencing the difficulty, you will never work hard to get it. So he had to leave his house uh, and all the comforts and shift to the ashram where there was no electricity, no water, drinking water or anything. He was but Nathaniel, then, Nathaniel Pearson. Pardon? Nathaniel was Richard's father. Nathaniel Pearson. Nathaniel Pearson, yeah. Uh, so uh, that's how the school started. And today it is a 2,500 uh, strong school. Although we made the building only for 2,000, but the government's laws and the way they are working is just ruin all the schools. So they forced us to start 10 new sections. So 10 new classrooms where we wanted 2,000 children, now we are 2,500. And the nursery is also brought in nursery and uh, the 
kind the kindergarten actually for two years of kindergarten which was not in the schools they used to always be run separately but the government made that you have to run them and you have to run as many sections as you have in the higher classes so which is armed to the school can you say anything about what the students experience in the, the your schools that's different than what they would experience or learn or understand somewhere else. Of course, else. because we we follow this integral education. We okay. follow the integral education as far as it, it is possible. Not always possible because of the laws of the government and you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to give so much time to this. But our school has a very good reputation because of that. People say it's an all-round development school and there is a very strong value system. The school starts in the morning with the morning, uh, morning uh, uh, prayers uh, where every different children read from Mother and Shobindo every day. So something of Mother and Shobindo is going on all the time and also we are allowed to have one extra reader for English and one extra reader for Hindi at every level. So these extra readers are all from Mother and Shobindo or value-based, whatever is available. So that is why our school is known not the results are excellent actually. The last results came in, children do so well. Uh, but it is better known because of the all-round education and the value system of the school. Almost, I would say, 98% of the schools, they take uh, capitation fee, bribes, donation money, whatever way they can squeeze out from the parents to give. Admissions are very difficult in Delhi. There are not enough schools as there are children. And nobody wants to go to the government schools because the government schools are really very, very bad. So there is a lot of competition and the schools have the advantage of, you want to come to our school, we'll give you if you pay 3 lakhs of rupees or 10 lakhs of rupees or whatever. So all these practices, malpractices are all over the place except for a very few schools and one of them is ours where people never have had to give anything to get admission. See, uh, in, addition to, yeah. uh, in addition to the mother's uh, school... The Actually, Bhuvna should be answering. Answer. I have uh, very I little think. connection with the school. She has worked there for how many years in the school as a uh, teacher? About a decade there. Uh -huh. So you ask her all the questions about this school? No, 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 no school, but I, yes, yeah. I think she did. And uh, starting with the beginning of the school. But in addition to the work at the school, at the, the schools at the Devi Ashram that uh, Didi does, uh, they also um, work, uh, the organization also works with schools that are not run by the Devi Ashram, but um, they are trying to somehow collaborate and integrate integral education in schools uh, that are run either by the government or by other entities up in the Himalayas. And Anju here actually does a lot of work with those schools. Anju is an ed educator herself with elementary education, with a degree in a PhD in elementary education. And she does a lot of work with the uh, schools in the villages around the ashram center that uh, the Delhi Ashram runs in the Himalayas. And I'm sure Anju could talk about See, uh, so this is the school which Tara Didi is talking of, which is a CBSC school. So we have to follow certain government norms. Central Board of Central Secondary education. education. But we also have these schools in the Himalayas. Where we, what we have done is that rather than opening our own school, we realized that uh, teacher education there is very, very poor. So we've, we've actually taken from uh, Mother and Sri Aurobindo's works about inte integral yoga and worked it within the system <coughs> of the curriculum. So today we, we have woven that for teacher education. Uh, we also realize that teacher education by itself is not enough uh, because there's the material needs. So we've set up play fields for the schools. Uh, each school that we have adopted today has computers. Uh, uh, we look at people because pe everybody's looking at how to speak in English. Uh, uh, we also have music and art 
So it's opening the doors not only towards literacy, uh, but all these schools are now uh, doing this in a very subtle manner. And even after seven years, if I say what have we achieved, the children are not getting beaten as they were before. Because first it was only a stick that they were using in the schools. Today children are doing projects, they're talking about uh, the values that we are talking of. And even, you know, they, they, they do flower card games, uh, they understand mother's symbol. Uh, but not through, through little stories that mother had written. Uh, so this is the Himalayas. Uh, besides that, uh, we also have uh, another school in uh, Kechala. It's a remote area, which is our own school, uh, which was done by Pranjal, uh, who has stayed all his life in the ashram. And uh, he went to Orissa. And it's a, it's a tribal belt where there was abject poverty and uh, people were addicted, the parents were addicted to liquor and uh, there was no education. So this residential school has been created there. And in that residential school, uh, I think something as an educator which I find unique is uh, the question that you raised just now. Uh, you, somebody asked this question, Will's asked about the freedom. Uh, so there are choices which children have and yet there is a periphery of great discipline. So these children who come from really poor homes today, uh, they can actually speak correct English. Uh, with a, uh, they, they know their own language. Uh, they know Uriya. And they can regale you with the Sanskrit shlokas uh, for two hours without repeating a Sanskrit shloka. Uh, so I, I think when we talk of integral education and uh, the Delhi Ashram's focus on education, uh, it's belief in the children. Uh, it's following the principles and nothing can be taught in its, all its simplicity. Uh, you, you go from the near to the far. So, so I think somewhere uh, the focus on education which has been created has given all of us the opportunity to learn and grow with the children. Uh, besides that in education, uh, Bhubna knows about it, uh, that we, we are giving scholarship to so many children. More than 200 children, we are giving sponsorship for their board and lodging and studies, only poor children. And for this we appeal to people to give a very nominal amount of 33,000 per year, which covers all the child's expenses. The rest is met by the ashram. And uh, we are also running another school in Delhi called the Mirambika Free Progress School. The Kechla school in this backward area is a free progress school. Each child moves at his own pace. It, there is no uh, strong classroom teaching at all. And uh, in Delhi we had this free progress school uh, for the last 25 years and more. And uh, it has got a very good uh, reputation. But we are having problems just now, some legal problems with the parents and all. So I won't go into those details, but uh, the Mirambika Free Progress School has about 150 children. And then we are also running another school in Delhi, which is called the Shobindu Institute of Vocational Training. Yeah. This is for the economically weaker uh, families, for youth between the ages of 18 and 25. So we take 50 youth for six months courses and we have carpentry, welding, photo lamination, plumbing, we have food, food uh, uh, fruit processing, Baking. we have bakery, we have cooking, tailoring, yeah. we have tailoring. There are only three subjects where you need to be class 12 pass. In all the others you can be uneducated and we still take, seeing from which type of families they are coming. And uh, the, the three subjects which need uh, class 12 is library science, computers, and office management systems. Uh, uh, no, office management and computers is together li library science and paramedical. 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 We have paramedical also. So these children, they work in the different fields six hours a day. Other than that, we give them. Uh, one hour of uh, what we call work offering 
Shramdan. And in that they have to learn all kind of work, whether it is gardening, construction, cleaning the toilets, cleaning the buildings, everything they learn for one hour in the morning. And then six hours of workshop they have, and then they have the computer classes for everybody. Even if they are class two pass or three pass, they still get computer classes. It's all an essential of them. program. And then they, this is absolutely residential and totally free. Not only totally free, we give them a stipend of 1,500 rupees per month. And it covers, uh, we already covered the medical expenses, clothes, everything is covered. They are staying there. Yeah, they are staying in the same conditions as we they stay. Eat, with eat the same food, sit at the same tables. There is no difference. Even if they are a jamadar, jamadar means sweeper, which is considered very low in our place. We don't make any difference. We all live together. They, every, you will be surprised. Even our sweepers, they eat on the same tables as us. We, we don't have that at all in our organization. We want to work just for temporary for two, three months. Yes. Can we do that? You're welcome. There's a Always welcome. Because every year we go to... We here. put some forms outside. We put some brochures outside. Okay. So you can write to us. And we look forward to people coming because, see, as as much as we are saying that we do so much, uh, we always need more uh, support, uh, in both in terms of uh, the finances, but finances still come in terms of people. So it's you most welcome. It's just like voluntary work yes. for two three months. Yes. Then we you can, you can, you I can. Supply. You can choose the place, whether in Delhi or Madhuban <laughs> or Kichla. I can speak to that a little bit by saying that uh, my two boys are 15 and 11 now. The own finishes on the 6th and on the 7th morning we're flying out to Kechla to volunteer at the school uh, there in that remote area that she was talking about. They go every year. And we've been doing this for seven year. years now. Uh, the boys teach and my younger one, Arja, has been teaching there since he was four. Uh, he did, which you know sounds really funny, but he um, has this huge atlas that you know the kind that you have in the elementary schools here, and you can all sit around it. And so he sits around that with the preschool children and the first grade children, and he goes, "This is Minnesota." And <laughs> you sit in a car and you fly. It's a flying car, and then you go to Amsterdam, and then from Amsterdam you go to Delhi, and you know yeah. he'll talk about geography and the oceans and. Uh, so he did that when he was four, and now he's eleven, and he, he's you know he, every year it's it's like Anju was saying it's growth for them as much as it is for us. When we first went there, there was neither electricity nor running water. Made no difference to these very American. My children are American. Let's just you know admit it there. Um, but they were very comfortable there. I think one of the biggest attractions for them uh, going to Kechla is that the children there speak English. And uh, rather unfortunately, my children are not fluent. One of them is very fluent in French and the other one is very fluent in Mandarin. But neither of them is fluent in an Indian language. And so they're comfortable there because the children there speak English fluently. And um, the children, uh, they are looking forward to, you know, my boys visit and my boys greatly look forward to it. They also she did... They these friends also. Yes, so they, um, they also collect school supplies from, uh, we live in a, you know, um, in, a in a regular community in uh, Minnesota and uh, my children go to public schools there. Uh, but they collect school supplies and things that the schools in India specifically need. Uh, Kechla is near a huge reservoir. And generally, ch Indian children do not know how to swim unless they are really affluent and uh, belong to a club there where there's a swimming pool. These children live right next to a reservoir on which boats go, but you know they don't know how to swim. So the school teacher has taught them how to swim. So the number one thing I collect every year are swimming trunks and swimming clothes for the kids, so that, so that they don't have to jump in naked into the pool now that they're you know grown up. So um, it's things like that. Um, my older son, who's 15 now is preparing an entire coding curriculum to teach them how to code just using Lego bits and 
uh, he's very much into engineering. He, uh, he and I both teach science, uh, science, physics and chemistry when we go there because the oldest children there are now getting ready to write some, um, you know, the equivalent of the GED here is what they're trying to write out there. So the two of us are helping teach science. There's the science curriculum there. Um, and my older son also uh, created a service group here and uh, 20 of his friends adopted 20 children in the school and they started a pen pal program mm -hmm. and uh, my husband uh, goes frequently to India and business trips are, you know, when I go, when we go, we take the letters there and then bring back things. Um, he had a very profound experience uh, a few years ago when we gave them all a pencil case from the elementary school here that we collected and said each of you can put whatever you want into these pencil cases and we will take them to the children in cage lab. And of course, you know, one child put his favorite t-shirt that he outgrew and the other put a slinky and the other put a toy and, you, uh, and we took them there and part of distributed them to the pen pal. You know, they all had a, a pair, a counterpart in, in cage lab. And then we said, well, we'll take back things. Here's an envelope for you. You can put whatever you want in this year. We'll take it back to Minnesota. And one of the children, Parthiv, came to me. Um, he was almost in tears, came and said, this child put her favorite pencil in the envelope because the pencil had an eraser at the end. And most pencils in India don't have an eraser at the end, and this one did. So she put that in. A lot of children made handmade bracelets. Mm -hmm. So for him, as um, an American child, I think it taught that what we value, the children here, I shouldn't say what we value, but you know, children here value, you know, send something to your friend in India would mean send a shirt that you outgrew. What they value is their most precious possession that they're willing to share with this American friend, Ethan or Ben or John, you know, names that they've only read in storybooks. So that, that, it's been a very profound effect on my children as much as that relationship has been for uh, the children in Kechna. So we're headed there again in, in a few days, in wow. three or four days. So. And if anybody else is interested in volunteering, either at the Delhi Ashram or um, at uh, one of the schools, either up in the Himalayas or out in Kechna, I'm more than happy to. Please reach out to me and I'm more than happy to talk about mm -hmm. any of the details. So with that also, I want to include, yes, we, uh, it's, it's a very good you know, opportunity taking you know, from here to like west to east but it will be a very good idea bringing east to west and with that I can talk my husband and myself. I have two kids too and I have great opportunity to be in Viramika for uh, three years. I taught in maybe one of the schools and that was my best experience and my mother uh, somehow sent me here. But uh, both of us, we are very much into, we love that mother's book on education and I'm a certified teacher here. I started. I work here in public school. So, and my son uh, goes to one of the private schools and uh, they have, their curriculum is somewhat like uh, free progress, like uh, Virambika. So my husband had the courage to um, take that book, mother's book on education. And it's very hard to, you know, um, give this type of gift to someone who does not have any idea, but he was very courageous. So he talked to the director of the school and asked him, would you like to read a book that will be really, really bring something new? So it happened like three years ago. And that book is very well used and we have workshops on that and my husband is the one who uh, is the facilitator. And, uh, and for me also in my classroom, uh, most of the time I bring the same philosophy, not openly, but uh, indirectly. And sometimes teachers, they ask like, you know, where, where do you get that? So I give them the passages from Mother's book and they are so fascinated. So uh, that's what I was also thinking, like it will be a good idea if we can create something here. There are lots of opportunities. My kids are also very much involved in the same type of work Bhubna is doing, but they are here with um, you know the uh, the community that we cannot afford so it will be a great idea we can maybe you know bring something like that here so i'll tell you we have uh, mothers international school and two three other schools one is An dr anand reddy's school in hyderabad <coughs> they send their class 11 children every year for a one-to-one -one teaching in kechla 
the class 11 children, our mothers international, all the children go to Kechda for 10 days and at that time they are only working with the children. They teach them everything. What they have learnt at school, they teach these children. And I can tell you that there are many of them are better teachers than the teachers that we have. And because our teachers, not many teachers with families are willing to go to Kechla because they can't send their children to good schools. And, uh, or they have their husbands with the job or whatever. But we send our teachers also to do social work during the holidays. There are every year summer vacation, autumn vacation. India is full of holidays. So many go and teach there. And we also send all the students at least once in their school time to teach there. And so does Anand Reddy school come to us. And there are others also, one or two schools. So from we should try now to see, like Bhuvana takes her children, few children go, then they can combine and go. That make, will make it more interesting. Make a change. Hmm? Yeah. But besides this, we also do camps for children uh, hmm. at our hill centers. So if I do not know you are an educator and how this can happen, but if groups of people are coming as families with young people, we could create uh, something in which they could uh, both experience the simplicity with Bhubna's children have experienced, your children, you are saying, I have three kids and I have experienced uh, the same simplicity with the children. So if you can create family camps for people from here to come to our centers in the Himalayas, uh, and then the children can also go and the adults can go and work in the village schools. Uh, I, I think it's more of a learning experience. It's not only the exotic India, but it's also the simplicity uh, which children are uh, receiving. Uh, so th that can also be some initiative which can be done uh, by people. So as educators you can come, as family people you can come, as donors you can come and uh, give something. Because those children, uh, when they receive something they've never seen, uh, they're very, very touched by it. But the experience that Bhubna has just shared about their giving, uh, they're immensely sensitive uh, to love and, and the feeling of giving it to others also. So we run another school also. It's called Matrikala Mandir. It's a dance and music school. And we have about 500 students in that school which is after school hours. It's like a hobby school. And we have very good teachers and there are many uh, people who come and spend time in the ashram to learn music uh, there. There are volunteers who uh, can't afford to pay board and lodging. So what they do, they say, okay, uh, allow me to stay and learn something and the rest of the day I will work. Mm -hmm. And that is also quite common. Uh, we've had, uh, uh, and we have a very good staff of music. We also have very good for yoga, and uh, I, I will send it to everybody once I'm back yes. there. There's going to be a three months uh, yoga teacher training course, full residential. And our courses and everything is very, very cheap because we uh, always cater to everybody. We never make it expensive. Yeah. These days there are many of these uh, videos that go online, Facebook and so forth, five minutes, ten minutes long, that focus on individual school, say that's doing mindfulness meditation or doing yoga in the classrooms. And these things I think are very influential uh, people pass them along to their friends and their families and, uh, and before you know it, some other school is trying it out just from the ideas that they get online. Is there any possibility of we, such a... We, we don't have the right people to come and do it for us, <laughs> to put it online just now. Yes, we are only working. We are only working when working. but. Our, if you go to our website, it's so poor, so poor. Do much more you don't more. get to know what we are really doing. It's a big list. <laughs> hey? It's a big list of a lot of things, and you don't know where to go. 
No, but uh, if, uh, in India, it has become compulsory for all schools to have yoga in the schools. It's part of the curriculum. And we've had it for 25 years already, that yoga was compulsory in our school. But other schools have just started. And uh, we've had meditation in our school from the beginning, from day one. But now some schools have started. You see, everything becomes a controversy in our country. The Muslims will say, why should we meditate? Uh, it is a Hindu culture. And then it starts and the government says, no, you can't do it. All kinds of things. Well, what I was trying to get at is not so much about meditation, but about the whole school that you're, you've created. Um, and if someone could come in and just give a taste of all the different things Most like. that go on. <laughs> they, they are so good at art. I can't tell you. Our Mindfulness children, they win so many yeah. prizes in art. They paint but like professionals. Vidhi, can I speak to Will's uh, question? question. Um, many years ago, when I worked with Didi um, very closely, you know, she goes out, she will go and talk like this at any, in any group. I will go and talk to any group and say, this is the work we're doing. But the biggest learning I had, uh, with Didi was she would always say, "Come visit us and see what we are doing." And to me, that was very uh, that was a really profound learning for me because I saw with my own eyes how much people change. There are people here, Julian, for example, who have visited the Delhi Ashram, at Dakshina, and when you go there and see the work that is being done, it, it's not something that can really come out. I'm not saying that it's a it's not a good idea. I completely agree that it would be good to have a web presence and maybe Sergi should be in uh, Delhi uh, on the flight to Delhi pretty soon uh, for that. <laughs> but um, I do think that there is, I, I learned from her, the immense value. So, you know, everywhere Didi goes, I mean, I would take her to a bakery and I would say, come, let's eat the croissants here and she'll go and talk to the baker and go, so when are you coming to India and see the book? <laughs> mindfulness that you're saying it's most welcome we are practicing it in some of our schools but we would be happy and delighted to learn more because that's also always there you know you visit you pass it on to us it's always needed so that I'll take it up but uh, it's the, it, even though here in schools too mindful meditation is very not even in school even hospitals and my daughter she is doing her degree in clinical psychology and neuroscience and she's very much into, like, she's totally mother's child, very much into, like, you know, and she reads a lot, mother's all stories. And so she got involved in one of these uh, program where they have uh, therapy sessions for drug addicts. So my daughter got very interested and she was, um, she became in charge of mindful meditation. And with that, uh, making them feel their, you know, the helping them to bring their self-esteem up, like you are not bad people, it's just a habit. And then she uh, talked to me, uh, mom, I really want to bring some inspirational stories. So she asked me to mail mothers those storybooks. So I had to mail those to her and she had to read. And she, she used to tell the stories from the small, small ways, taking like one value and talk to them. And those people, they became so, you know, fan of her, even though on the street they would see my Savitri. Oh, it was so inspiring. 
So uh, these are these are the things like you know it's not only that that's what my question it's not only back in India if we can bring go there learn and something bring back here and make people aware of you know mother's energy mother Shirobindo's philosophy it's so beautiful that will be a really good idea you know connecting.